walk out of those historic doors, again, out of the Neil A. Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building here at Kennedy. And here it comes. Here they come, our CFT crew taking their first steps outside for their historic flight test to the International Space Station. Commander Butch Wilmore and pilot Sunny Williams. Pausing for a second, a wave from both of them as they walk on over to family and friends. I think they're throwing out mission patches. Was that it? Uh, yeah, Butch, uh, Butch definitely likes to share the, uh, the, share the joy. <laughs> and again, they had a, a couple more roses, which they've handed out to folks here and the crowd. We can see astronaut uh, Doug Wheelock, a uh, uh, who comes, who came down to support the family. He's uh, also getting some some good video to to document, for, you know, for family archives this uh, this special moment. And Doug Wheelock and Sunny Williams were in the same astronaut class, right? 1998. 1998. The penguins, we called them. Mm. You know, I like that. My uh, high school mascot was a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Playing to the crowd as they always are. They have great personalities. They're really keeping up all the energy, getting everybody pumped for this historic mission. And this goes back uh, to our question uh, from Bailey: Is that uh, this is how we prepare for a mission mentally, right? We we take the the joy and the energy uh, from our our teammates and our friends and family here. They're going to take it to the launch pad, and uh, they're going to be ready ready for flight. A couple more words here, planned. Time to leave is about three hours and 20 minutes from launch, so they still have a little over two minutes left. Making their way down to other folks. A crowd following them to take some photos, some videos. The Astrovan door open and ready for when they want to hop in. And this is all carefully choreographed. The, the the uh, spacecraft ha hatch is open, and uh, the, the convoy uh, to go to the launch pad, which will drive by here, uh, will have to arrive just in time. So everything is down to the down to the minute. And uh, on the first round, uh, uh, I had to nudge Butch and Sonny to get in the van to be. <laughs> to <laughs> I remember the time. that. I remember that. I was wondering, huh? They're running behind a little bit. <laughs> well, that's uh, all on. That was all on me. But now that I'm not there to to speed the, uh, slow them down. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson there on the right, and Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, accompanied by ULA CEO and President Tori Bruno. Again, taking the opportunity to say their well wishes to Butch and Sonny. Sonny saying, come on over here, Butch. Let's take a photo. <laughs> Some waves again as they slowly make their way to that Astro Van door. <laughs> we can see uh, Boeing's uh, astronaut liaison, Megan Donaldson, getting a, a hug there. She has been such a great help to uh, uh, to keep the crew and manage uh, Boeing management and Boeing team in sync, as well as to make sure they stay on time. And that's why uh, they're they're on time today. Thanks, Megan. Good job. <laughs> oh, not me. Got it. Oh, well. <laughs> And thank you to you, <laughs> Megan Cruz. Uh, all right, the door now closing. Also riding along with them will be the driver and a backup driver. The driver for all three attempts has been Rodney Perry. Again, thinks his job is so cool. You know, what an amazing, unique opportunity. And then we also have the, the backup driver. That's right, the backup driver is Blake Poston. Um, you know, he's riding in the passenger. He monitors the radio and gets minute by minute updates on the spacecraft and rocket. He typically handles transportation logistics for Boeing's space programs, and of course, he is excited to be oh here God. for this mission. Yeah, both really cool opportunities to be a part of, of this flight test. Now they will have a full security escort. Again, the drive will take about 20 minutes. And here they go, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams now en route to Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's launch pad 41. Go Butch, go Sunny. Woohoo! Even more people there in the parking lot, waving, taking pictures, sending their well wishes to the pair.
Yeah, the team here at Kennedy Space Center is uh, definitely, uh, they've been focused on a lot of things, a lot of other launches, but today they're there to support Starliner and uh, Atlas and, and getting ready to, for the crew flight test today. And as they make their way to the launch pad, we want to remind you that both Butch and Sunny are experienced naval aviators. So actually we have some old school pictures here. Sunny back in the day, you know, she initially wanted to be a diver in the Navy, but said she watched the original Top Gun movie and decided to go to flight school. So actually she was a helicopter pilot for the Navy. And then here's a picture of Butch. Fun fact, he was a real Top Gun pilot. He's there on the far left. Now, I mention all this because given their backgrounds, it's only fitting, right, that they wanted... LC, Slick on Channel 1. Go ahead, Slick. Crew transport convoy is en route to LC-41. Estimated arrival at the roadblock is at L-307. Roger. That they wanted clips from the Top Gun Maverick movie playing in the Astro van to get them all hyped up for their test flight to space. But my question for you, Mike, as you rode with them the first time, is are they actually watching that? Because my impression is they're making a lot of phone calls while they drive <laughs> in the Astro van to, to people they want to thank, right? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Butch OSM, LC. OSM. Crew transport convoy is en route to pad. Permit entry into FHA. Roger. So that was a uh, uh, launch conductor, uh, Doug Lebo, giving uh, permission for the, the crew to go into the, what is it, the hazard area. Flight hazard area. Flight hazard, hazard yep. area so that uh, when, the, when the van gets there, they don't have to wait to go through security because we, we know that's always fun. <laughs> uh, so they're going to they're gonna get the speed pass to go through. So uh, Butch and Sonny really um, have appreciated the, the, the team that we're all part of. And uh, astronauts get a lot of credit because we're at the tip of the tip of the rocket, tip of the spear, if you would. Uh, but uh, we really do appreciate uh, everybody who's worked hard for Starliner mission. It's been a long time coming. And so Butch and Sonny... Uh, took some time in the previous uh, flights for them to uh, to call their different uh, their different teammates and uh, along the way and and, and show pr appreciation and I know if uh, even though they're my friends if they were ever call me I know how excited I would be and this is a pretty neat thing yeah now let's check back in with NASA's Brandy Dean and Boeing's Jim May who are monitoring things and mission control at Johnson Space Center Thanks, Megan. There are no issues being worked so far today at Mission Control in Houston. Uh, things are going smoothly as the team works through their timeline. One of the first things they did after coming on console was a weather briefing with the crew in crew quarters. Starliner's luck with weather continues as they again had few concerns to discuss. Weather's looking good for today's launch. And then a little less than an hour ago, the team here in Houston took control of Starliner. And at the moment, they're working in a little bit more of a monitor mode, uh, keeping the spacecraft stable while Butch and Sunny head to the pad, and um, while the teams at Kennedy Space Center prepare Starliner for their arrival. Uh, once the crew gets strapped into their seats and the hatch is closed, things here will start to pick back up as we perform cabin leak checks and monitor Starliner's life support systems, uh, which are hold, um, hosting crew for the first time into space. And then in the last 20 minutes before launch, there are a few important actions they'll work through, switching Starliner to internal power and working with the crew to activate the launch abort system. The launch